In this video, we're going to talk about the question, if two people are committed to each other, do they really need a piece of paper to seal the deal? Now this came from Kara Smith on our Facebook page, and thank you Kara for sending this in. Very interesting topic to talk about. And if you have a question that you'd like answered or to discuss, or just to a topic to discuss in general, please put it in the comment section below, or do like Kara. Uh, put it in our Facebook page, put it in our Twitter account, or in our Instagram page. However you submit it, I'll get it, and we'll talk about it. Now, my name is Charles Yerkes, and I am with SimpleNotShallow.com, where we help you keep it simple, not shallow. So, you know, two people committed, do they need a piece of paper? As I was thinking about that, you know, I thought it would be very nice to uh, get s some input from sources that are not biblical. For if what we study in the Bible is true, it needs to find some practical applications in the real world or from the real world. We need to see how the two line up. And so that's where I decided to begin. And in looking through uh, things, I found several wonderful articles. I'm, I'll link to them all in the discussion, description box below so you can check them out whenever you'd like. But they all said similar things, and, and, and uh, starting with the New York Times in 1987. Now, the New York Times is not exactly the uh, harbinger of Christian thought, right? So I found it interesting that they said there's a major difference between those who are just living together and those who get married. Those who are living together and then get married have an 80% higher divorce rate than those who simply get married. And this is what the New York Times attributed it to. They said it's not the fact that they live together first, but it's that those who live together don't have the commitment to marriage that married people do, that who just get married out of the gate do. So they have less commitment to marriage, which also means then that they have less commitment to staying together as they split so often. So they have less commitment to marriage, they have less commitment to staying together, so it seems like they have less commitment to each other than those who simply get married. And uh, another interesting little uh, article to help flesh this out a little bit and explain why is from First Things First, an organization dedicated to helping families stay together. And what they have found is that people who live together before getting married uh, have one of two mindsets. It's normally it's a test drive. We're testing marriage out to see if it's a good fit. You know, they're trying out their partner to see if they really is the one, you know. Maybe they don't want to get divorced, and so they want to check this person out to make sure they're compatible. And they have, or they have the mindset, the second mindset, rather, is that, you know, they know this isn't a real marriage. This isn't a real, um, a real marriage. And so they know that if things don't work out, they can simply jet. They can bail. So they enter into it knowing that it's not permanent, knowing that it's not cemented. And that way, if it doesn't pan out, they just go. Again, that doesn't speak of being committed to each other. Being committed to yourself, but not committed to each other, at least as much as people who just go ahead and get married. Now, this uh, uh, group also says something interesting about this concept of a marriage being a piece of paper. They said that the moment that you make marriage simply a piece of paper, simply a legal agreement, you have stripped all the depth, meaning, and richness out of what it means to be married, and you have set the marriage up to fail. So by saying if we're committed, why do we need a piece of paper, you've automatically set up any marriage that you have to fail because you've reduced it from what it is. Very interesting. Next. I looked up uh, something in the Daily Mail. Again, not a great um, harbinger of Christian thought. The Daily Mail now it, it was celebrating a recent study. This is from 2012. It was celebrating a study that says this turns all previous studies on its head. It shows that people who live together are no different than pe people who get married. There is no difference. And that, they keep saying that until about halfway down the article. Then in a little caption, under a photo, they say, well, yeah, but this really only applies to couples who were engaged first to be married before they moved in. So that 
it only applied to couples who had committed to marriage, couples who had already taken the steps toward marriage, couples who already had the goal of being married. That's who this new study applies to. Those folks are have similar numbers as the ones who just get married. And it continues to say that for those couples who just cohabitate first, there is no change. Those couples who simply move in together first, with before they make any decision about getting married, the numbers of, of splitting are still very, very high. So, according to the Daily Mail, the difference is their commitment levels. Those who just live together are not as committed as those who are engaged to be married or those who are married. And um, from the spruce.com, and, and this year, this it came out in 2018, it says some interesting things to help open this up. It says, you know, that couples who cohabitate first have a much more stress-filled life than those who simply get married. There's, there's trust issues. There, there's no certainty there. So it's more stressful. Another interesting point is that couples who cohabitate have a higher degree of infidelity than couples who get married. And there's a higher degree of violence and arguments in couples who just live together than those who are married. Those are all interesting things, and it speaks to me that there's a difference between being married and simply living together. One of those being that the commitment level is not as strong as it is if you just get married. Now, this isn't Christians saying this, please. Understand, this is studies outside of the Christian realm. And in everyday world is telling us that there are these differences. So it would seem that if you're really truly committed to each other, you're on your way to be married. That's just what the evidence seems to say to me. And that marriage is much, much deeper than a mere piece of paper. Now, with this information, let's turn our attention to what Jesus says about how he feels about this commitment and what he thinks about this relationship. And you may want to buckle up. No, I, I'm serious. You want to sit down and buckle up. This is going to make your head spin. So in Matthew, and, and for all these different verses, and I'm just going to move four uh, Bible uh, passages today, but I'll list them in the description box as well. So the, the first passage is in Matthew. And here Jesus says something very profound about commitment, this particular commitment. He says, if you divorce your spouse for any reason other than their being uh, committing adultery, for their being unfaithful to you, and then you go marry somebody else, you're the one who's broken the commitment. You are the one who has cheated, been unfaithful. You are the one who's committed adultery. And he says in another passage in Matthew that you know, when you do that, the spouse you've just divorced, you've made them the victim of adultery. And anybody who then marries this person, your ex, is also being forced to commit adultery by you. And what is that saying about how Jesus views this commitment? This is more than a piece of paper. This is very deep. Now, to help expand this a little bit and, 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 and to take it... Uh, in a little more practical application. In Ephesians, Paul says, you know, husbands, you're to love your wives as you love yourself. What does that sound like? That's the second greatest command. You know, the first one was to love God with your entire being. The second one, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Last time, we saw that it meant love your enemy as you love yourself. And this time, it's saying love your spouse as you love yourself. I told you to buckle up. So, love your wife, love your husband as you love yourself. This is what this commitment means. And to take it one step further, in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, you know, uh, husbands, your body is not your own. You have no authority over your body. Your wife does. And wives, you have no authority over your body. Your body is not your own. It is your husband's. Your husband has the authority over your body, even as you have authority over his. See, now we're beginning to see uh, what Jesus said, what, what God joins together, let no man tear asunder, that there are two people becoming one. 
where there's full acceptance even as you're completely known. All your weaknesses are known and yet you're completely accepted. There's security, there's trust. It's amazing. Now, so when it terms of this question, and, 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 and remember, we're just answering this question. We're not developing these thoughts anywhere else. Those are other videos for other times. But right now we're seeing that the value that God puts on this relationship, two people coming together in marriage, and the value he puts on this commitment and what he says this commitment is, is a lot deeper than when somebody says, do I have to have a piece of paper? God says no piece of paper in the world is going to change this. This is the level that this commitment runs at. So, you know, you have to wonder if, if you're asking about do you have to get married and you're committed through the lens of a relational God, are you really that committed? I told you, sit down, it's going to make your head spin. Well, that's it for this video. Ms. Kara, I hope this did uh, justice to your having asked the question. And if you have a question that you would like to ask or a topic you'd like discussed, please leave it in the comment section below. Or you can do as Kara did and simply leave it on my Facebook page or my Twitter page or my Instagram page. However you want to ask, I'll get it and we'll talk about it. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please click that like and the subscribe buttons. And once you click that subscribe button, make sure to grab that little gray bell icon that pops up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new chat is posted. Thank you. Well, until next time, click like, click subscribe, and I'll see you then.